Hello, everyone. Uh, same procedure as last year. It's me talking about Gamma Ray. Um, for those of you um, that don't know it yet, um, Gamma Ray is an uh, introspection tool that um, allows you to attach or uh, yeah, attach to a cute application like uh, like a debugger does, and then um, retrieve all the uh, queue objects and the information about them uh, from your application. And on top of that, we have a whole bunch of uh, uh, framework-specific visualizations um, to yeah, show a state machine or something like that um, to help you to do um, debugging on a much higher level. Um, the thing I was showing last year uh, in, in the lightning talk was uh, our ongoing work to uh, enable remote debugging um, so that you can debug and application running on an, on an embedded board, for example. Uh, and I said that this would also enable, finally, to get us some uh, Qt Quick 2 tooling, because Qt Quick 2, um, uh, Qt Quick 2 applications uh, might not have a, a full Qt application instance. Uh, so our previous work of uh, having the tooling run in the same process uh, didn't work anymore. And um, yeah, that has happened. So I can show you now. Um, uh, what you can do nowadays with Gamma Ray. And instead of going through slides, I'm going to show you this on, on a live demo, so what could possibly go wrong. Um, this is a little Qt Quick 2 example that comes with Qt, um, the clocks demo. So just some, some animation um, of clocks and a list view. And this is um, Gamma Ray uh, connected to it. So you see the entire um, objects we have in, in there. That's, I mean, we could do that last year already. That's not particularly interesting. Um, but the new part is we now have um, specialized tooling for, for Qt Quick 2. So in the most basic form, you can look at the, uh, the item hierarchy. Um, let's pick one of the clock elements. Um, you see all the properties of that. It doesn't matter if the properties are defined on the C++ side or on the QML side. Um, it's all visible here. Um, we get some highlights um, on, on the preview, and if we pick something like the, the actual arms of the clock, you see bounding boxes, transformations, layouting information, margins. Um, so that's very helpful on, uh, on debugging uh, layouting issues, so stuff is not showing up in the place where you want it. Um, this helps you to find out why. Um, let me pick the rectangle. Um, we can, of course, also um, change stuff in here, so give it a different color. And that um, immediately reflects also in the actual application. Uh, so that's very handy if you do uh, fine-tuning on, on various aspects of, uh, of your program. Um, instead of restarting all the time, um, even if it's just adding the textual QML files, um, you can do all of that um, in place, basically. And once you're happy with it, you can transfer it into the code. Um, let me just also change the, the radius so we have some more interesting uh, geometry in this. So this is, um, this is the basic stuff, just object introspection, right? And we can also look at connections that exist on an object, um, incoming and outgoing connections, um, signals and slots, uh, kind of the usual stuff. Um, we also have some more advanced features uh, that are mainly interesting if you're doing custom item development. Um, so your own Qt Quick 2 items that, um, that use uh, the scene graph API or, or custom OpenGL code um, to yeah, achieve more than images and rectangles. And for that, we can look at the, uh, whoops, the actual scene graph. So one level below the item tree, the thing that's actually used for rendering. Um, Usually you are not supposed to have access to that, but we found a way to get to it. And 
just rescale that a bit. Um, we get uh, some properties of the, the sequence graph nodes, um, like the transformation matrices and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, but more interesting, we also get uh, the custom geometry. Let me try to find the rounded rectangle, and you see why this is interesting. Um, so if you if you have more complex shapes in there, um, it's very useful to see the, the actual geometry you're sending to, to OpenGL. And the common mistake in there is that the order of the, the vertices is slightly off, and then triangles are rendered uh, on the backside, right, and they become transparent. So it looks like your ge geometry is okay, but you don't see anything on the screen. Um, this helps you in, in tracking this down. Um, we also get the, the shaders in there, so you can see if your shader actually is being executed. Um, and, uh, or look into, like, like here, in the built-in shaders and see what they are doing. Um, another interesting thing is uh, related to uh, performance optimization. Um, so if you have any performance bottlenecks in, in rendering, um, there are some very helpful uh, visualizations built into Qt, actually, um, that you usually only can switch on and off at, at application start. Um, we have a way to, to do this at, at one time. So let me put this always on top. Uh, if I wouldn't be that short-sighted, that would actually work. So. Um, so the first one is clipping. We don't have that in here, so all black is good. Um, usually you would see red areas for items that have clipping enabled. Clipping is bad because it breaks the batch rendering. Uh, so that's a, a common source for, for rendering performance problems. Um, the next one, that's the most fancy one, it gives you a, like a 3D view on the... Uh, how the items are stacked on top of each other. Um, red are transparent items, green are non-transparent ones. And you see, for example, there on the, on the right-hand side, there is one element that is actually outside of the screen but still visible and being processed by the, by the scene graph. So if you have too many of those, it might be worth uh, um, making them invisible so that you don't have, uh, have to, do, to, to handle them. Uh, similar, if you have too many items stacked on top of, top of each other that are actually not visible, um, that's a nice way of seeing this. Um, we also have the, um, the batch rendering. So you see each color means a different rendering batch. You want this as uh, monochrome as possible because every time you have to have a different rendering batch, you have to change the OpenGL state, uh, and that's expensive. And we have the very flickery update indicator. So if you have uh, um, changes coming in or the, the scene re-rendering uh, and you don't know why, this will visualize uh, where it's coming from. Um, so that's about rendering. Um, another feature we have is um, some support for uh, event debugging. Um, the most basic form is actually remote control. Oh, let me switch off the annoying visualization. Um, that's especially useful if you're working with an embedded device and you don't have your touch screen yet or you don't have uh, a proper keyboard input and you want to um, send some events to the, to the actual application. You can send that through Gamma Ray as a, as a remote control. And you see in the, in the item tree, if I actually give it focus, um, there's little icons that show you the active focus and the um, the, the regular focus, so especially if you have a, a large chain of uh, focus scopes, that helps you to identify where the, the problem is. And as you notice here, as soon as I switch, I lose focus, so that's quite, uh, kind of annoying with, uh, with focus debugging. Uh, but thanks to remote support, even on the desktop, I can use Gamma Ray on the second machine, um, and then I don't lose focus during debugging, so that's also quite helpful. Um, yeah, I think I'm running out of time, so we've seen all of this. Um, if you don't know it yet, Gamma Ray is free software. You can download it from GitHub. If you want to see more um, on what it can do, um, 
we have it at our, our booth, at uh, the Keda booth. Uh, just come there and uh, you can see all the other features it has. Okay, thank you.